This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. Our Lifestyle, the podcast brought to you by Sparkles Detail. Visit sparklesdetail.com in order today or have the clean team that supports the scene detail your ride at any event that they're in attendance. Also, Custom Car Show Productions. That includes Orange Beach Invasion, Scraping the Coast, Bayou Showdown, and Sicknick. Make sure you follow Orange Beach Invasion, Scraping the Coast, and Bayou Showdown on Instagram. These events also can be found on Facebook with much more details. Make sure you tell them our lifestyle of the podcast sent you. Yo, 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 it's our lifestyle of the podcast, episode 113. Hi, my name is. That intro song hopefully will make a little bit more sense here as we get into this episode. But first, you guys know who's in the house. It's Miggity Mike, the mayor. What's going down, my man? ODB Airhead Nation. So good to be on with the both of you. Because I know the whole Airhead Nation is listening. Granted, we got 19 and a half. I said a half because one of them just had a kid. So congratulations. I don't know which one, but one of them had to have had a kid. So we're up to 19 and a half listeners. So thanks to all those sponsors that are paying us those big bucks for 19 and a half spon- uh, listeners. <laughs> You're crazy, man. You know, <laughs> hey, we got to start off. I kind of like this, man. Got to start off with a little wrestling deal. The other day, you and I were texting, and I want to say it was on the 25th, and uh, it was in 1985, the WWF champ Hulk Hogan with Hillbilly Jim defeated, I think it was Brutus Beefcake with, uh, was it Johnny V or Johnny Five? I forget. No, it was Johnny Valentine, baby. Yeah, that's who it was, and then Jim broke his leg when he slipped on a wet patch ringside while chasing... Johnny Valentine, and next thing you know, the um, the injured, uh, basically injury forced Jim out of action for seven months. But, dude, that photo of Hulk and uh, the hillbilly, holy crap, man, those guys are like freaking steroid mizunkies, man. <laughs> Come on, don't you try to say the Hulkamania was on steroids, brother. That's from from drinking the the eggs and the and eating the eggs and drinking the egg yolks and <laughs> and, and, and just working out with all the Hulkamanias behind them, man. Ah, I'm telling you. Well, this episode is brought to you by Orange Beach Invasion. Of course, you guys already know you want to be at Orange Beach, Alabama, March 15th to the 17th. Make sure you look up Orange Beach Invasion, all three separate words, on Facebook or at Orange Beach Invasion on Instagram. Also, Sparkles Detail. Support the clean team that supports the scene. SparklesDetail.com or on Instagram. So, Mike, the last episode, man, came together, 112. Talked a little bit about After Dark. I know you're still kind of riding that wave from the show, man. I know it felt good. Dude, it felt so good to get that first one under our belt. And uh, just want to thank everyone again that came out and supported the first show. And uh, don't worry, because 2020, we got more coming for you guys. And I, I definitely want to give a shout out to Sparkles Detail, uh, to um, Stingray Chevrolet. Those were our two title sponsors. And then, of course, Felt Hand Fabrications um, for everything that he did uh, for us. And I can't forget RJ. I came to designs for those badass um, best of trophies. And uh, if you guys are looking for trophies, RJ, I came to designs is in the trophy game now. So promoters, anybody out there, uh, give RJ, hit up RJ over at I can designs. He's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. Send him a message, RJ Silva, and uh, let him know that, Hey, I need to get some of those badass trophies. You made Mike for after dark. So, um, but with that being said, Jay, uh, uh, after dark 2020 
dates are getting announced uh, February 15th, 2020. February 15th, 2020. Um, there at Quaker Steak and Lube, same place. We're going to do it all over again. We're going to have a damn good time. And uh, I'm going to change some things up a little bit and, and uh, see what you guys think. But, dude, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. And I know um, a lot of the sponsors have already come back on board for it again. And guess what? I know OLP is going to be there. So definitely look out for uh, the flyers and the, um, and the, you know, the event page and all that stuff. Uh, hit that going button and uh, let's have a damn good time. But Jay, you mentioned wrestling and we cannot forget since we're already talked about wrestling. Let's go back real quick. The WrestleMania 36 in 2020 is heading to Tampa, Florida. So airhead nation, we're going to get a big band and we're going to ride out to Tampa and we're going to hit up WrestleMania 36. So you and Jay, you ready for this brother? I can't wait, man. You know what's crazy is a couple years ago, I took Preston to the Pro Bowl out at, was it Outdoor Stadium? And I think WrestleMania was there. That was one of the last couple ones I remember. And I tell you what, seeing the photos, there were more people there for WrestleMania than there were for the damn Pro Bowl, which I think they just need to stop doing. But, dude, so Tampa, I can't believe it, man. Dude, that is awesome. And that same place that you're talking about, if I'm not mistaken, I think they had 90,000 people in attendance for that um, for that WrestleMania there in Orlando. It was fucking unbelievable that wrestling still pulls in that many damn people. Yeah, the people's elbow. Didn't someone come down from the upper top of the uh, stadium and just die right down onto the, onto the mat or onto the mat or whatever they call it, man? The ring. It was the crazy. ring, baby. The ring, the ring. So we've got a lot to talk about. You're wondering, obviously, most of you guys saw the artwork before you listened, and you're like, ah, I get it. Hi, my name is Biggity Boom. I've got a nice, awesome segment that we will include on this episode that talks about the 20th, that's right, the 20th anniversary of Eminem's classic no matter which way you spin it, some argue one of his best albums. I wouldn't go that far, but I do love the album. The Slim Shady LP. You probably have listened to this album. You probably own it multiple times. You've listened. But there's going to be maybe some fun facts you didn't know about it. Some details, some specifics. So you guys know I love music. Big Eminem fan. I'll go through that album a little bit later. Mike, we always start with the podcast updates. We got word that graphic disorder came through as always. They shipped the shirts earlier this week. I know when you guys get back from Detroit, you and Mrs. Bayer will be looking forward to getting those shipped out to all the Airhead Nation. Yes, and just to give Airhead Nation an update, the shirts will actually arrive at my house on Friday. I leave Thursday night. I got the notification today, Jade, that you, since you brought that up, I just remembered. Um, shirts will be delivered to my house on Friday. We leave out for Detroit Autorama Thursday night. So we don't get back till late Monday. So starting Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll start shipping all those shirts out. And everything else that you guys ordered will all be shipped out next Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday. Um, there, guys, there are a shit ton of orders, uh, that we have to ship that, you know, me and Mrs. Mayor have to ship out. So we're going to get all that stuff uh, sent out next week. You're going to get your emails, um, confirmations that it's coming. And, uh, but dude, Airhead Nation, you guys rock. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate all the support. And I promise we will get those shirts shipped out, uh, early to mid, uh, next week. I know you're looking forward to Detroit. I know it's going to be a good time. And it's all good. You know, the shirts always come through from Graphic Disorder. I'm looking forward to seeing them. I know you are too. Just kind of worked out where you'll be out of town. So when you get back, of course, they will be there. We will get those shipped out. Bare Knuckle Customs, Tony Vickers over there in the Orlando area, he hit us up at After Dark and was said, he said, hey, homie, I didn't get in on the pre-order. I want to get one. We will have a few extra Typically, we do, based upon the numbers that we submit, we will make sure that we also have those up on the website. I know not everyone gets in on the uh, the pre-order, totally understand, 
So we'll have those up. And as Mike mentioned on the last episode, right after after dark, he was able to get him and Mrs. Mayer the website updated. So if you want to go out there, we do we are seeing some orders trickling every day. We'll have the new stuff up sometime mid next week. Mike, the other item, I'll let you kind of break this to the Airhead Nation. There was a sponsor, a certain sponsor at After Dark, and you know he has approached you a couple of times and said, "Listen, man." How can I uh, become a part of the podcast and help with what you guys are doing with the On The Rise movement, the Our Lifestyle, the podcast movement, if you will? So why don't you bring uh, or break the information to the Airhead Nation? Well, Jay, uh, we definitely we got a new sponsor uh, just came on board, and uh, we we definitely want to welcome and thank uh, Jason Feltham with Feltham Fabrications. For coming on board and he's now a part of the airhead nation and uh he's gonna be doing some pretty special things for us and i think you guys are gonna be pretty excited to see what he's gonna be doing for us and the first first one he's gonna do for us is uh is going to be at orange beach invasion so if you guys are at orange beach invasion you will have a chance to win one of these uh feldham fabrication uh skate decks so uh we're gonna be doing some olp uh, picks at all the shows that me and Jason are going to be at, or I'm going to be at, or Jason's going to be at. As long as one of us is at the show, there's going to be an OLP pick, and those OLP picks are going to be brought to you by Feltham Fabrication. So definitely, uh, you guys go and check out Feltham underscore Fab on Instagram. That's F E L T H A M underscore F A B on Instagram, give it a follow and uh, check out this badass shit. This guy's putting out. And, um, I know he claims that he's only a welder, but I tell you what, his art that he's putting out is pretty badass. So we definitely want to welcome him on, you know, part of the airhead nation. And if you guys are looking for anything, any kind of Yeti cups, any skate decks, just any kind of phone cases. I mean, he's got all kinds of stuff over there on his page that you can check out, hit him up and uh, get some prices and uh, get him to put, uh, do some work for you. I mean, he's done air tanks. Um, I just seen him uh, put out some air tanks for some different guys and uh, these things come out badass. Um, and any of you promoters, if you guys are wanting some, uh, some trophies done, um, he, he does those too. Um, so just hit him up, check him out and follow him on Facebook as well. And uh, like all his stuff up there on Facebook, the guy puts out videos all the time of his work uh, so you can see it firsthand. And I know he will be at Orange Beach's um, Invasion as well. I don't know if he's going to have a booth set up, but he will be there. Um, so just check him out and uh, welcome Jason uh, to the Airhead Nation. Uh, we appreciate you uh, coming on board, brother. You do great work. And thanks for reaching out and saying, hey, stepping up to the plate and kind of, uh, you know, one of my favorite JFK quotes is you know when he said ask not what your country can do for you ask what you can do for your country and you know i would challenge everyone that you know ask not what the scene can do for you ask what you can do for the scene so big ups felt ham fab stepped up and uh, he's gonna hit it out of the park so we're looking forward to seeing a lot of the airhead nation over these next uh next 12 months or so with, you know, with the different awards, and it's going to be an honor to give those out. So big ups. Additionally, I did want to let everyone know that uh, although Lincoln Addict Podcast was somewhat maybe on the downfall, it, it uh, was a little bit of a lapse in me recording a new episode. Make sure you go out there if you love this uh, podcast or you're just curious about Lincoln's, maybe you want one one day, go out there, subscribe to Lincoln Addict Podcast. Episode 5 posted. Episode 6 is going to have John Cashman. And he is a legend. He was recently on Jay Leno's Garage. Uh, you can view that episode on YouTube. Or, of course, it does air on one of the NBC affiliates. But uh, easier to watch on YouTube. And, Mike, I'll give a shout-out to Jay Leno's Garage. After I watched that episode, it rolled into the additional episodes. He had, I think I mentioned in the past, some of the lowrider guys on. He has a lot of different people associated with the custom car culture. Some of the purists, you name it. Uh, very entertaining, so I always enjoy watching those. 
Now, Mike, the scene updates, my man. So I'm going to switch this up a little bit. I'm going to let you go first, a few things that you've noticed over the past week or so. And, you know, we can kind of go back and forth on these, right? So, uh, but, you know, you guys know I love to talk. I usually take these first. So, Mike, what's something that you've noticed in terms of the scene over the past week that you want to mention? Well, shit, we're going back to our damn wrestling topic. Here we go, our wrestling topic. But this one's a little bit different because our boy Jason B over at Relaxing in the Park just announced and just put out there for the world to see the best of show belt for Relaxing in the Park. And, dude, whoever did it, I didn't catch who did it, but, damn, did they knock this thing out of the park. It's freaking beautiful. And um, so you guys, make sure y'all check out Relaxing in the Park, St. Louis. And uh, there on Instagram, uh, Jason B is posting after post after post after post, going live day after day after day. So he is tagging like crazy. He is pushing the show like no other. Um, you guys do not want to miss this show. And this best of belt is badass. So it's definitely one of the best looking belts uh, that I've seen out there. And uh, so mad props to Jason B. And this best of boat, a uh, best of belt, which is going to be given away to best of show uh, there at his show. Yeah, and let's show Airhead Nation. Let's show him. You guys, listen. Go out there and follow Relaxing in the Park STL for St. Louis on Instagram. He's just over 500 followers. Let's ratchet that up. Let's show him that you guys listen and you guys are, um, you know, supportive. So, Mike, here's one for you. I just received earlier this week the new Street Trucks. Love the magazine. You basically have Mike Alexander's truck. I think it's an F100 on the cover. You also have a Nissan, I'd say Mini Zonda Rise, kind of a midsize, but of course it, it's considered a SUV, a mini SUV. That is in the lower middle of the cover. So really kick-ass issue. You got the real, I said the real Matt Smith. His dually is in here. Really, really, really good issue. So check it out. And, uh, you know, we'll go through it a little bit more on another episode. But uh, a very cool cover, which I believe was shot by Johnny O. Johnny O Photo. And you can't go wrong. Follow the homie on Instagram. And it's going to be good shit. Well, Jay, all I know is flo flow is definitely it's out there brother he was all over lst um had a lot of good shots and hey quick question for it are those f100s on the rise dude i think the f100s have been on the rise and so much show that uh engaged media they actually have the builder's guide for those and um uh, they're super sick trucks man they really are and I know this one has a lot of different styling to it uh, with the kind of the copper look and, you know, the color of the paint and just, you know, everything kind of really kind of comes together on this truck. So it's cool to see Johnny O behind the lens because, as Chris Hamilton recently mentioned, y you can't go wrong with Johnny O photo. Oh, one of the best in the business right there, brother. Um, but next up that, uh, that I'd seen that I thought was pretty damn cool is uh, our buddy Chad over at Lucky Tramps Customs. Um, he is actually over in St. Cloud, Florida. He's got Gene Whitfield coming over into town, and they're going to do a Gene Whitfield workshop. It's going to be a two-day metalworking seminar, September 7th through the 8th, 2019, there in St. Cloud, Florida. Uh, guys, all you got to do to reserve your spot is just email LuckyTrampsCustoms at gmail.com or give them a call, 407-358-4676 and, uh, to reserve your spot. Um, I don't see a price on here, but if you just go to Lucky Tramps um, on Facebook and you can see this whole thing he's got going on here, um, which, dude, Gene Whitfield is the man. So if you're into this whole uh, metal work, uh, metal working uh, seminar, here's the seminar for you right there. They're going to go all over the tools 
and uh, basically just what it takes and what you need to do. It's going to be a two-day seminar, September 7th through the 8th, 2019, you know, 2019 there in St. Cloud, Florida. So just hit up Lucky Trans Customs and uh, uh, ask Chad any questions that you got. Next, I'd like to say All-Time Low Magazine. You guys already know, atlmagazine.com. Those issue 17s, they are arriving in uh, the mailboxes this week. Then also for issue 18, we've got a cool thing coming from our lifestyle of a podcast in the magazine and uh, looking forward to it. Uh, we'll share a little bit more details as we get closer on that, but I will tell everyone, as Mike always says, get that 2019 subscription for the price point. You cannot go wrong. And I'm trying to remember, Mike, didn't they just r launch a new T-shirt? Uh, yes, they did. Because when you get your magazine, if you get the magazine, you ordered a T-shirt, you got, you're getting both of them at the same time. You got your all-time lows T-shirts, and you got the issue with uh, our boy Matt Daly and his badass Nissan on the cover. So if you didn't get a T-shirt, make sure you hit up alltimelowmag.com. Get that subscription, get that T-shirt, get some stickers. Uh, just let just let them know that OLP sent you. ATLmagazine.com. Click on online store. Biggity boom, you're right there. Big ups to Matt for the cover. He was on our Scraping the Coast episode last year. Good dude repping acrophobia with the two capital A's. You know how they do. So, Mike, what else you got, homie? Well, we're actually going to have this guy on, so I want to give some mad props to our boy Bobby Mass for getting the cover of uh, of Trucking Magazine. And I do believe um, he's still got this damn uh, Tahoe, and it's for sale. Not for sale, but it is. Or I'm sorry, not on sale, but for sale. And uh, believe me, if I didn't have my Tahoe, I would buy Bobby's Tahoe in a heartbeat because this bitch is bad. And, uh, you know, mad props to Phil Gordon on uh, on the shoot and getting him on cover. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful Tahoe. And uh, you'll hear some more from uh, Bobby Mast here coming up real soon. Yeah, we're going to call the homie and trucking issue. This, uh, this is pretty cool. If you go on Instagram and type in Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y-F, YC that stands for F Yo Couch. You know how he does. This thing is sick, man. I think it's really an underrated truck because, you know, we see a lot of SUVs that are just laid out and you kind of look at it and you go, yeah, okay. But then you start to see all the work that's involved in this thing. And that's why, I, you know, he hinted at his Instagram post that it had been in the making. Maybe it was Facebook or Instagram, but it had been in the making for a while. So, I'm happy. When we left after dark, I didn't tell you this, we cruised out. I was rolling in Bowling 67. He had the 58. And Bobby cruised past us, dude, skating that thing, dude. Just driving perfectly down the uh, down the street. He has those uh, LED lights in each of the wheel wells. Really kind of gave it a cool vibe, man. And we saw him get on the interstate and just cruise out. Really, really badass truck. And don't forget... The truck was also on Bayou Showdown's uh, flyer for last year. Uh, the artwork, I should say. So more, um, you know, more to come from Bobby here in a few minutes. But Mike, speaking of Bayou Showdown, did you happen yes, to sir. see that big announcement, dude? Uh, yes, I did. And um, I tell you what, that is a prime, prime ass location. So if you guys did not see this. You guys definitely want to check out Bayou Showdown. Now, this year for 2019, Bayou Showdown is going to be November 17th. I'm sorry, 15th through the 17th at its new location, Harbor Center in Slendell, Louisiana. Okay? It's going to have indoor and outdoor is going to be available this year. Guys, you do not want to miss this. Hotels are less than a mile down the road. There's one that's basically right across the street, and there's like five of them that are miles down the road. And you are now going to be 20 to 25 minutes away from um, downtown uh, Bourbon Street. So, guys, put it on your calendar. Buy you Showdown, November 15th and 17th. 
at the new um, location, Harbor Center in Slendell, Louisiana. You don't want to miss the show. Yeah, I've got the event page right here, and I'll tell everyone, in this Facebook world that we live in, it's easy. Type in B-A-Y-O-U Showdown. Of course, two separate words. You'll land right on the event page. Uh, select that you're interested or that you are going, and then, boom, you'll get a chance to take part there in the uh, discussion about the show, and you'll receive uh, information there. Now, I was talking to Sean Randall earlier in the week, and Mike, I think – Rumor has it, I could be wrong, man. He, you know, I told him, I said, dude, buy you showdown. We need to bring back buy you Billy from the old Nintendo Entertainment System, dude. Remember that game? <laughs> uh, fuck yeah, dude. And I think, dude, Sean would rock the shit out of that outfit, man. And uh, I, I, I see it happening, brother. I absolutely see it happen. Matter of fact, I think they need to go ahead and have the best buy you Billy. Um, costume character uh, contest. Yes. On the rise, man. Yeah, cause, um, dude, I'm going for the cutoff shorts now. Man, Fatty B in Low Bros, he's rocking. The, he's got the cutoff shorts where, the where you, you know, your 80s where the uh, pockets are hanging longer than the damn shorts, bro. <laughs> oh, you ain't lying. But, I, hey, I tell you what, though. I say we start the hashtag, you know, hashtag buy you Billy. And uh, bring back by you, Billy, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, dog. It's going to be a good time, man. I'm looking forward to the show. I actually commented. I don't go on Facebook much, but I was on there the other day, and I posted a comment. I was like, damn, man. That's right before my birthday. I'll be looking forward to trying to make it up there. That's my goal. Oh, yeah. You don't want to miss that one, brother. That's for sure. Yes, sir. So on a lighter note, I saw our homie down south, crazy man himself, Dave Fester Herndon. A little bit of um, you know, sad post here. From what I could tell, he had a buddy, and I don't know if I remember meeting this guy, but his name was Tommy Taylor. And apparently he passed away. And just want to say rest in peace for anybody that happened to know him. I looked at his Facebook page, and he seemed like a guy that was full of life. And uh, anytime you, know, you lose someone, it's not easy. And the guy didn't look that old, man. So rest in peace to Tommy. And, um, you know, hopefully all the guys, including Fester and anybody that knew him down there in that area, there's a tight, uh, a knit community of people, uh, of course, especially from the mini truck scene. And uh, rest in peace, Tommy. Absolutely, because I've seen quite a few people, especially from down south, that have posted up and, and talking about Tommy. And, and uh, definitely rest in peace, brother. Uh, you know, hey, they say the die, the good die young, and obviously, uh, obviously, you know, another one is is went home. Most definitely, man. Say what up to Papa Smurf, homie. All right. So, on um, a different note, I noticed Christy French. Now, of course, she is with Frenchie, is his nickname from Solo Films DVD. She got. Uh, jumped in, if you will, to the Severed Ties gang. So big ups to her. I know that she's been really petitioning for a while and really hustling and love seeing uh, someone like her and just so many women in the scene that are thriving. I definitely would love to have her on and maybe talk about that at some point here in the near future. They were down there at LST, and she is good peeps, man. Oh, you ain't lying, brother, and, and definitely congratulations. She got those diamonds put on. Diamonds are forever, baby. You know it. And if you look her up, it's uh, Christy, K-R-I-S-T-I dot French on Instagram. Uh, so check her out. And uh, she's good people. That Jeep that she has, uh, that stuff is on point. So uh, into Frenchie, big ups. You guys are good people. Keep doing your thing. Yes, sir. And the last one that I got over here is because it's one of my favorites is we got um, Aaron Contrell winning best graphics over at uh, LST. And, guys, if you have not seen this damn truck, it is absolutely on point and freaking beautiful. Uh, so if you're going to be at Orange Beach Invasion, you will be able to check this bad boy out because I'm sure he'll be parked front and center over at Orange Beach in Invasion. Uh, so make sure you guys check out Aaron Contrell's uh, four-door S10 because this bitch is bad. It definitely is, man. And, uh, he, you know, he's a guy that goes to a lot of shows, 
I love that S10. Saw it at scraping last year. It's badass. He cleans his rig up. He drives the rig. I love the rig, by the way. And uh, just a good dude, man. All around American good old guy, man. And uh, he's always repping Acro, so big ups. The last couple updates that I have, Mike, and then we will patch in here Bobby in a moment, was uh, I noticed on Jalopnik, a real popular site that pops up in my Google feed a lot, there was an article that they had posted, and I think it was something about the Ford Ranger. It was apparently a prototype of it. It actually, um, from what I recall, it, it it was something that I mean, I I only saw a small I only saw a small photo of it, but it did actually look pretty nice, man. And I probably I could eat, I could be eating my words here because, like I said, I only looked at it pretty quickly, and I thought I had the link right here, but. Uh, hey, you know, we've heard the rumor of the Ford Ranger coming back and uh, for minis or, you know, technically midsize vehicles nowadays, I thought it was pretty cool. So uh, big stuff there. We'll cover more here in the near future because it is technically, I think, a mini truck, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely a mini truck, brother, and they are getting them in as we speak down here in the four dealerships. Uh, here in Naples, so uh, they had a big, big thing to do about uh, that. They're on the Rangers are on the way, so we'll have them down here, uh, here shortly. Rock on! Then also, there was another article that talked about that American buyers are paying about sixty some odd percent higher for trucks, and of course, Mike and I have covered this several times in the past with the newer trucks. We we definitely love them, but the title on Jalopnik was. Truck buyers in the U.S. are paying 61% more for their pickups than a decade ago. And as Americans, you know, we love our trucks. And, of course, a lot of the OEMs, we've talked about this, they're starting to decline building all these different little uh, cars. So the trucks are where it's at, and uh, they're definitely on the rise in terms of the prices. I, I would highly tell everyone if you're looking to buy a truck and it's not, you know, you don't want a brand new one, wait till the end of the year, look up some of those different websites to get you a deal. But uh, truck prices are definitely crazy. They're up there. Shit. Not only are the truck prices, but the truck sales, dude, they are kicking cars at ass. They definitely are. Hey, and talking about trucks and talking about on the rise, don't forget to mention our boy, John Turner, Big Juice has got his 2015 Ram 1500 uh, up for sale, and it just hit eBay. Forty grand, guys. Get over to eBay and check out. You know, Juice's uh, 2015 uh, 2015 Ram, of course, done by none other than uh, Jimmy's Rodden Customs. Yes, love that truck. Uh, t- Rep and Topper Gang. Actually, there's one more that caught my eye. I'm a big uh, Seinfeld fan, but Jerry Seinfeld is suing a company that he allegedly bought a fake 1.5 million classic Porsche from. I kind of scratch my head and say, how does this even happen? The article kind of goes on to say that they presented pretty much what they consider like a certificate of authenticity from the company. Uh, He sold it to FICA Frio Limited for more than 1.5 million in 2016. And that company sued Seinfeld on February 1st in an effort to get back cash it spent on the car. So pretty crazy there. But, yeah, you know, things happen, and uh, for whatever reason, uh, that's definitely uh, not good. But I think he did recently liquidate like $22 million worth of his cars at auction. That was a couple years ago. It's crazy, man. Seinfeld's a big car guy, and, uh, you know, wish him the best with that one. Yeah, you ain't lying. Good luck. So, Mike, let's go ahead and bring in the big homie, Bobby Mast, and then we will cover a couple more items, and then I'll roll into the Slim Shady LP turning 20. So we got Bobby Mast. What's up? We got Bobby Mast in the house. What's up, man? Not much. How's it going? Everything is good. You know, Mike and I, we wanted, we tried before to get you on, and we had a little bit of technical difficulties on our end. But this is perfect timing because, you know, we see you at a lot of shows. We saw the truck at After Dark. Love the truck. I mean, you constantly go to shows. But, dude, man, 
Mike from Mike and I, let's say, you know, congratulations, dude, the cover of truck. And are you super stoked or what? Yeah, I'm super excited. It took uh, a little longer than expected, but uh, I'm glad it finally came out. So why don't you give the listeners a quick rundown of the year, make, model, and just some of the heavy mods that you have on your uh, SUV. Uh, It's a 2007 GMC Yukon Denali. When I bought it, I mean, it was already body dropped by Smith Chassis Works. Brought it home, uh, stripped it down, repainted it, you know, new interior. Uh, The biggest mod is the 17 GMC front conversion, full front end, uh, done by Saltworks, Metal Fab in Sarasota here. And now it's got the 17 taillights to match. So as far as body mods, that's pretty much the biggest ones. Yeah, we gave your Instagram handle out earlier, Saltworks Fab. You can follow them on Instagram. They do killer work, dude. That front end on your truck is insane. Mike, I know you saw it out there at After Dark. What were you thinking when you saw the truck, man, just in all of its glory? Well, of course. Like I've tried telling them, telling them all the time, I said, shit, if I didn't already have my Tahoe, I'd definitely be rocking Bobby's Tahoe because that bitch is bad. Yeah, it is. And then I don't know if you caught it, Bobby, but when Tony Bolin and I left uh, after dark, we were cruising the Lincolns next to you, and I saw you freaking skating by. You had the lights on that would give it that nice effect. It looks damn good, dude. That thing is low as hell. Yeah, it, it definitely rides low. I mean, that's how it was built. I mean, those things are. They're hard to get down that low and actually drive good. And uh, Smith Chassis Works did a killer job on it. I mean, I I skate that thing one inch off the ground. And actually, it's funny. If you look at some of the pictures and some of the videos, I actually have a crown in my front bumper from riding so low that it'll actually grind. It grinds and arcs from the crown and the road into the front bumper. Hails to the yeah. And I was reminding Mike, don't forget, by you showdown last year, you were on the artwork, and I think that's pretty badass. So, like, what's the feeling now that, you know, the truck is sick. It's still freaking bringing in awards. You're on Bayou Showdown last year, the artwork. You got the cover. I mean, dude, how stoked are you? Man, I've been super excited on all the positive, you know, feedback I've got on the truck. I mean, not only was it Bayou Showdown shirt, you know, it was it was on the after or the doing in the dark flyers last year. It's on the OBI flyers this year for you know Greg Miller show Orange Beats Invasion. Um, it was also a laying a, laying at the lake in Texas. It was on a flyer there. So I mean, the positive feedback has just been amazing. You know, building that truck, I wanted to get it done in, in a timely manner and still build something that was classic and everyone would like. You know, of course, I built what I liked, but. You know, I just, I'm just blown away at, at all the positive things that have happened with the truck so far. Now, Bobby, with all this positive stuff that you're getting back with it, is this truck still up for sale? Not on sale, but for sale? You know, everything has a price. I mean, you guys both know that I, I, I have a niche in my side and my, you know, a big thorn in my side with my C10 and, you know, selling the Yukon was a great achievement, but it's not what I like. Like, my, my C10 is my passion, and, and I just want to finish that truck. So, you know, if someone comes with the right amount of money, the Yukon can definitely find someone that can enjoy it. So that way I can get back to, you know, that truck and get that thing finished up. Hell, to the, yeah, it looks great, man. It really does. Can you tell us when was the truck, like, so those photos that are going to appear now, I haven't gotten my issue yet, and... When were the, when was the truck shot? We shot the truck probably three months after LST last year. We shot it down in Marco Island, actually. And it actually got shot for street trucks at LST. But when I got the opportunity to have the, the trucking cover, I pulled that chute so we could actually go forward with trucking. So it's been almost... It's been almost a year since it's been all said and done. But with trucking, you never know when it's going to come out. You know, they hold on to them for a while before they actually release them. Well, I'm just glad to see your truck on the cover of Trucking Magazine. It says some lifted truck. So it's good to see this uh, bagged and bodied uh, Tahoe on the cover. Um, but I'm sure because they always say that the lifted trucks sell more. And, and it's definitely no hate or no slight on the lifted trucks because they're badass trucks too. But it's definitely good to see the the bag and body tahoe on the cover of truck and magazine yeah i mean i'm i'm super excited about it i never thought it would happen you know the c10 a long time ago got a lot of features under construction and stuff like that and i was 
I was blown away by that. So to have a, a actual cover on a mainstream magazine is, is, I mean, I'm floored. Okay, you've brought up the C10 a couple times now. Where, 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 and uh, like, what kind of state is the C10 in right now? All right. Well, I'll break it down, and make it short. But the C10 was in Detroit at, at a good friend of mine's. He was supposed to be taking care of it, getting it done. It sat out there for three years and got neglected. I gave him a lot of money, and it just nothing happened. So. I guess now is as good as time as any, but Michael Lee has my truck, um, Mikel's Auto Body, just outside of Missouri. And he's had the trucks for about four months now, and he's supposed to be tearing into it probably starting now just after LST, and um, hopefully we'll have it in about six months. Nice. So basically it's just paint and body is where you're, is what you need uh, left on the C10? Yeah, paint, body, interior, you know, just finishing touches. But um, for the most part, yeah, paint and body is the biggest the biggest section that needs to be taken care of. And he's a pro. I mean, he's done a bunch of SEMA trucks and some really, really nice things he's done. So I'm, I'm very confident that the truck is going to be killer when it's done. Sounds like it's on its way, brother. Definitely look forward to seeing that for sure. Yeah, man, I'm just happy to always see you at shows, dude. You're... You're kind of a guy that you kind of look at Bobby and you're like, man, I don't want to mess with that guy, right? Straight, you know, he'll take you out. He's a big guy, you know what I mean? But, dude, he, you know, Bobby, I'll, I'll say it like this, man. You represent the scene well. You got a badass truck. You go to shows. You slap hands with people. You know, you're kind of a guy that, you know, you don't always have something to say, but when you say it, everybody's listening. So, you know, I salute you, man. You got a badass truck. It looks damn good. And I can't wait to see it repping hard all throughout 2019, brother, and beyond. Yeah, I definitely try to go to a lot of shows. I think last year, you know, when we debuted the truck at LST, I think I hit pretty much every show on this coast, you know, trying to represent, get the truck out there and support the scene. And, you know, I enjoy doing it. I see you guys at most of the shows I go to, and it's almost like we never even leave Florida because we're always seeing each other there. But it's just, I enjoy it. You know, I love it. My kids love it. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what happens this year with the new truck and hopefully, uh, we keep keep it going. Well, with that being said, Bobby, are we going to see you at Orange Beach Invasion here soon? I will be at Orange Beach Invasion. I will have uh, the Yukon there and the golf cart. <laughs> hey, that golf cart talking about, uh, who painted that golf cart there, buddy? Oh, Jason Feltham over there, Feltham Fabrication. He did a killer job on it. I mean, it's I'm blown away by how well that golf cart turned out. He wasn't happy with me when it was done, but boy, it turned out pretty good. Hey, we just announced Feldham Fabrication came on as a sponsor for OLP, and I knew he painted the golf cart, so that worked out perfect. <laughs> yeah, he does a lot. I, I put that guy through the ringer because he just finished my wife's roll cage in her Jeep uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. And, you know, I, I like to challenge the guy, and he always comes through for me. So it's definitely – he's definitely a good one to be on that sponsor list. Absolutely. He's good people. He's good people for sure. Hey, uh, Bobby, with that being said, is there anything else that you want to give anybody else any shout-outs of? Uh, that worked on the Tahoe or didn't he work on the Tahoe or, or you got anything else coming up that you want to talk about here to Airhead Nation? Uh, you know, I, I mean, everyone did a great job. Saltworks Fab, you know, Interworks on Sarasota, Florida. I mean, they killed the interior. And not only did they kill it, but they did it for a decent price. I know they just finished Barsha's Dually too. So um, they, they definitely handle, you know, every spectrum of interior. You know, Forbidden Customs in Lakeland, they did the paint. You know, other than that, I mean, it's just, I'm just glad to be a part of the scene, and uh, I'm glad that everybody likes the truck, man. Flux, yeah, my man. That, that's sick, dude. And, you know, don't forget, you're repping Extreme Lows, right? So you got the big XL, yeah. and you guys go hard. Yes, in the I am. And I see you more than I see a lot of the members out there. And uh, I mean that in all due respect, man, because you do really represent the scene, and you're a good dude, and you're always hustling. So keep doing what you do, bro. Yeah, I mean, it, it does get lonely out there every now and then. I mean, but everyone has, you know, everyone has their things going on in their life. So, you know, it's not always, a, you know, they don't have the force and opportunity to do as much traveling as I do. And, and I understand that. But, you know, it's it's all about being a family, you know, with the club and without the club. And, you know, you guys and, and everybody I talk to, you know, they end up becoming good friends. And it ain't really about what club what club you're repping or, or anything like that or what you drive. It's, it's about the people, and that's what we enjoy. Couldn't have said it better, huh, Mike? Exactly, brother. Just like dropping more says all the time, it's more than a sticker, baby. That's right. Well, that's it, man. Well, we appreciate it. As we mentioned, it's Bobby F-Y-C, F-Y-O-Couch. 
get out there, keep hustling like big Bobby Mass, the man out there repping hard. So we appreciate you, Bobby. All right, man. I appreciate you guys too. Hey, have a great night. You too. So, Mike, it's awesome, dude, to have someone humbling like that. So we're going to kind of just move in a few more updates. And, Mike, I know our friends over at 33 Pneumatics, they had a pretty big announcement. You probably saw it as well. Did you happen to notice that on Instagram? Uh, I did see something on there, but I ain't going to lie. I did not read the whole thing. So tell us a little bit about it, brother, because I did not catch it. Yeah, man. So they did announce the 33 pneumatics pressure pods. It's a five digital pressure display. So tank in four corners, seven colors in standard mounts available. It's about, uh, looks like $200 us and it's available in three weeks. Uh, you will have to have the homie back on to talk a little bit about it. He had on the Instagram post, almost 40 comments and, uh, you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of talk about the digital versus kind of a leveling type system. And I tried to get into it a little bit, and we did. He mentioned it was coming. I'll be honest, I didn't realize it was going to come this quick. So, uh, you know, more information, hopefully on a, a near episode in the very near future to talk a little bit about the pressure systems. I've read a little bit about them, and, you know, some of the systems will, you know, air all the way up, and then they'll let out a little bit of pressure to where, you know, you know, where do you want it or where do you have it set? That's my understanding of like kind of what they're going to. But uh, so more to come from the homie there. Check out on Instagram, 30, T-H-I-R-T-Y, number three, underscore pneumatics. Mike, before we hit the shows and round it out, uh, a couple of culture updates. So Eminem, as I mentioned, the Slim Shady LP, that's what this episode is titled. Uh, Hi, my name is. That 20th anniversary just happened. A lot of good articles out there, including one that I'll touch on from NME.com. Uh, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years. Technically 21-ish for the I Just uh, just Don't Give a Fuck, which came out around October of 98. Uh, it wasn't, I don't think, the first official single, so I'll touch on that. Love the album still, and I found myself the other day jamming out to it. Remembering back to my younger days. Mike, I know you know that album too, man. Hi, my name is Miggity Mike the Mayor, right? <laughs> Dude, who doesn't know that damn song, brother? I'll never forget the MTV Musical or yeah, Music Awards where he comes out and he had like hundreds of little freaking M&Ms walking out where they all dressed like him and they all had the blonde bleached hair and the white shirts all walking out. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, and that was for one of his like a little bit later songs. But to your point, he was everywhere, dude. He really was, and like he everywhere. ruled it. He ruled MTV, man. Yes, he did. Yes. Well, that was when when MTV actually, um, you know, played music and music videos and and all <laughs> yeah. that shit. Now, now it's sixteen and pregnant or whatever the hell all that shit is that they put on there now. Definitely. Now, here's the other thing. You probably didn't see this yet, Mike. I'll have to text you the link. I was blown away. I see a lot of Back to the Future stuff that pops up in my feed on Google because I'm constantly looking for cool stuff. There's a group that I didn't really know much about them that's called a New Found Glory, and they did an epic, and I'm talking epic, Power of Love remake, which was uh, Huey Lewis in the News. This is an official video. you got to go out there and, and look up New Found Glory, The Power of Love. Dude, there are, the whole video is all Back to the Future, man. It's got Doc, you know, a Doc Brown type deal. It's got Marty in it. It's um, I mean, it's really, really well done. When you see something that touches upon pop culture like this, you typically are going to have a lot of bad comments. This has like five thousand likes on ins or on um, YouTube. Only two hundred and six thumbs down. Lots of good uh, comments, like my favorites, are the cardboard set of Hill Valley. I mean, when you guys see it, it's really well put together. I was really, really impressed with it. Hell yeah, brother. No, I did not see that. You're definitely going to have to send that my way. Yeah, I definitely will. Before last uh, two, three items, I think, I saw the NFL competition committee. They were talking about something like they're going to – change a rule where the players can't leave the bench to go do celebrations. I'm like, 
they got so many other issues and they're worried about this shit, you know. I mean, let, let's not even bring up the whole Saints game, you know, that whole fiasco. But sometimes, Mike, I just wonder if they just sit back. They're like, how many millions did I make? Let's just screw with the game more. I don't know, man. I just don't get it. Dude, they, uh, they've been saying forever that uh, NFL stands for No Fun oh, League. Yes, I know. Well, speaking about that, it may not be a fun league, Mike, but one of the owners, man, this guy, <laughs> I mean, he just, I mean, imagine winning the Super Bowl as an owner or a player, and that's just not enough, dude. Even the playoffs, I know it wasn't technically after the Super Bowl. I think it was maybe the AFC Championship game. Imagine you're up in the New England area. You fly all the way down to South Florida. Mike, what was this guy doing in South Florida the same day before he flew to Kansas City? Well, um, looks like he was a little busy down in <laughs> South Florida. And it looks to me, looks to me like um, he got caught up doing a little illegal shit. But you know what? The one thing I do have a little sympathy for the guy, okay? I don't know if everybody knows this or not. But he did lose his wife. Uh, he did lose his wife not that long ago. I knew you were uh, going to say know, that. He he is a busy guy, uh, so you know I can't really can't really blame the poor guy. You know what I'm saying? Well, here's what someone I talked to the other day said: Ben, this guy's got so much money, he could go to a party and women are going to throw themselves all over him, right? Just for the just because they want to be. You know, they want to get a, a diamond ring or whatever the hell he buys his mistresses, right? And I'm thinking to myself, like, why would you fly all the way from New England, the plane flight shows, the the flight records, all the way to South Florida, the Jack Shack or whatever they call it, then all the way – I'm like, dude, like, this guy could have pretty much any chick he wants. I don't get it, man. Hey, I, I guess all these guys with all this money still don't have all their brains. I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. I know, brother. Well, that brings us to our last little segment before I roll in to Hi, My Name Is with the Slim Shady LP turning 20. So, Mike, did you want to cover the shows, my man? Well, dude, this segment of Our Lifestyle, the podcast, the show segment, is brought to you by All Time Low Magazine. And if you guys have not subscribed, make sure you go subscribe. If you guys not have not got your brand new All Time Low Magazine, shirts go buy one and if you have not gotten your 2019 show calendar yet make sure you go do that too hey jay what is that alltimelowmag.com atlmagazine.com see that's why i asked for you because i always screw it up <laughs> but you know what they're gonna remember it because you said it twice yes sir. but guys we've talked about this and talked about this and talk about it and talk about it you do not want to miss orange beach invasion and that's going to be March 15th, 16th, and the 17th at Orange Beach, Alabama. Guys, this is the Airhead Nation, okay? Mini's on the rise. And, guys, we got some badass mini. Tim Davis's 95 Nissan Hardbody is on one of the show shirts. And then on one of the other show shirts, we got David Phillips' 1956 Chevy Apache on the other one. If you have never seen that truck in person, that bitch is bad. So make sure you guys go there to Orange Beach Invasion and pick up your show shirts because they are not going to last long. Fuel Market does the artwork and they absolutely kill it every single year. You do not want to do not want to go away without one of these show shirts. And guys, don't forget. Oh well, I don't have my truck done. So how much is spectators? Guys, there is no spectator cost. Spectators are free. And let me tell you, you got a wife and you got kids. I don't want to go to a truck show. I don't want to go see all these cars, these trucks. Believe me, this is my wife and my daughter's favorite show because they're going to be spending half the day in the damn spa because the spa is right there. They got shops right there. They got restaurants right there. They got the movie theater right there. They got the arcade right there. Guys, go enjoy the car show. Go enjoy the truck show. And the girls, they can go do – they got bars right there. They can go get drunk if they want to get drunk because the condos are – they can walk to their condo. It's right there. Everything is right there, guys. You do not want to miss Orange Beach Invasion. Up next, you're going to see ODB 
He's flying out, and he's going to be at Forbidden Fantasy. And Forbidden Fantasy is going to be the last week of March. I screwed up the dates last time, so I ain't going to do it again. But you're going to be the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st uh, there in Nevada. And, guys, Forbidden Fantasy. I went last year, and, man, was it fucking awesome. So now ODB is going to go, and he's going to get the experience this year. And, guys, you can't mess up when you got the casino, the hotel, and badass lowriders, mini trucks, all right there, all together. All the clubs partying at the pool, inside of the casino. The restaurants are awesome. Don't miss out Forbidden Fantasy. And then, let's see, what do we got? April 13th, doing it in the dark, 2019. Okay, guys, Mini Madness Crew is putting on uh, doing it in the dark. It's going to be at Quaker Steak and Lube, April 13th. And obviously, doing it in the dark, it's a night show. So get those lights and uh, get those lights on the cars and let's light it up, baby. And then the end of – see if I'm going to screw this up again. I said May last time, and nobody caught me, but it's going to be the end of April. Mini Truck Nat, 25 years of Mini Nats. Guys, if you have never been to Mini Nats, you don't want to miss the 25th anniversary. Um, Jason and his crew, Jason Bell and his crew – are ready and they're, we're ready to take over uh, this little last town in North Carolina. And guys, it is a freaking awesome time. You go out there, you can cruise up and down the strip. They let them drag up and down the strip. It's just, it's a such an awesome time. It's such an old school, laid back feel. Uh, 25th anniversary of Mini Truck Nationals. Don't miss it, guys. And that's going to be. The um, let's see, what do we got? The 26th, the 27th, and the 28th of April. Mini truck nets. Jay, that was brought to you by All Time Low Magazine, and uh, that's all I got for this week, episode 113. What else you got, Jay? Next, as I roll in, that segment will be brought to you by Hammered Weekend Wear. But I just want to thank everyone for continuing to listen, the subscriber. Base is on the rise. We continue to see the numbers increase. We appreciate it. We will be reinforcing that this podcast is mini trucks. It is hip hop. It is music in general. It is everything cool. It's 80s. It's BMX. It's skateboard. It's whatever we want to make it. Mike, I appreciate you, brother. Dude, Jay, guys, Airhead Nation, we're going to, I, me, will be at me listen to me i will be at detroit autorama this weekend look forward to seeing all you guys i know i've contact i have talked to the simpsons mike and kate simpson but guys i'll see all you airhead nation this weekend i want to thank all of our sponsors and dude mad props to hammered ron hammered weekend wear i got my shirts freaking chris rawlings izuzu artwork fucking probably the baddest and best artwork to date and I know I say that about every one of them that come out, but Graphic Disorder knocked it out of the park. Guys, check out Hammered Weekend Wear. Get your Hammered Weekend Wear shirts. And I will see you guys this weekend, Detroit Autorama. Hey, Jay, with that being said, Airhead Nation, we are People's Elbow. We are cheer. Peace. Yo, yo, so it's ODB, and here is, hi, my name is Segment, which really pays homage to Eminem's breakout album, the Slim Shady LP, uh, arguably one of my favorite albums of all time. It brings me back to my younger years, as I mentioned. I do want to start off and say that this segment is brought to you by Hammered Weekend Wear. That's H-A-M-M-E-R-D. Weekendwear.com. Make sure you visit the site. They feature custom vehicles that are real builds. You visit hammeredweekendwear.com. Scroll down, click on shop, hover over, and look at the tees, the jackets, the hoodies, the banners, you name it. A lot of awesome shirts for $20. Make sure you hit them up and add OLP to the notes. You never know what Mr. Riggedy Ron Perkins may throw in. 
Slim Shady LP. Again, 20th anniversary. Now, recently I was reading an article on Freep.com, and it was, there was an excerpt from Detroit Free Press, February 28th, 1999. Quote, it all adds up to an incredible rise for Eminem, who turned 26 in October and has spent the last week shuttling across the country amid a vortex of publicity, blazing camera flashes, and zealous autograph seekers. At the moment, he is very much in his moment, the strange, surreal rush that comes only once, if ever, in an artist's career. The streaking, screaming rise to the top. It doesn't exactly feel like a shock, he says, but it's all new to me, and I'm taking it as it all comes in. Of course, that was Eminem back 20 years ago. Man, where do we start? I would say that it um, is really an awesome album. If you think about where he started, and you know, many of you know if you're Eminem fans that some of the tracks were reused, so we'll talk about those from the Slim Shady EP. Of course, Dre found... There's varying stories, you know, that Dre heard a demo and, you know, the rest was history, but he did, uh, he was smart. And as we heard on one of Dre's songs when he said he's, when he said he kept his ear to the street, he signed Eminem. He really was smart by doing this because it was a perfect time for M to come out and he had this voice for the suburbs, for just, uh, you know, that youth in general that was like, I just don't give an F, you know what I mean? So... What I would say is, you know, pulling some of this information, as I mentioned, uh, Freep.com, there's a spin article, there's an NME, like Nancy Mary Echo.com article, and then of course there's Wikipedia, and then my favorite, Genius.com. But on Wikipedia, it says Slim Shady LP is the second studio album and major label debut by Eminem. It was released February 23rd, 99 by Aftermath Entertainment and Interscope Records. It was recorded in Ferndale, Michigan, following Eminem's recruitment of Dre and uh, Jimmy Iovine. The album features, of course, production from Dre, the Bass Brothers, and Eminem himself. The Slim Shady LP is the first album with a major label after his first album, Infinite, was released on an independent label in 96. Of course, that was a flop. You've heard Eminem talk about that. I actually have uh, Infinite, and I don't really necessarily mind it. You know, it wasn't the genius that this album was, but it's kind of cool if you've never heard it. Check it out. The majority of M, or excuse me, the majority of the album's lyrical content is written, as you know, from the perspective of the rapper's alter ego, Slim Shady, whom the rapper created on the Slim Shady EP in '97. The lyrics are noted for their depictions of violence and heavy use of profanity. Kind of goes on to say that it had uh, critical and commercial success. It debuted back in the day, sold about 283,000 copies, but that was nothing for where it ended up. Just Don't Give a Fuck, Slim Shady EP was released in uh, October 98, as I mentioned earlier. The first official single was My Name Is, which peaked at 36 on the Billboard Hot 100 becoming his first entry on the charts. You may recall the album won a Grammy Award, Best Rap Album. The Slim Shady LP turned Eminem from an underground rapper into a high-profile celebrity. Interscope awarded him with his own record label, as you guys know, Shady Records, and he embarked on an extensive touring schedule to promote the album. I actually saw him... April of 99, I want to say it was. I got to look. I got the date at work. I have a magazine clip uh, cut out, and it was at Janice Landing. It was badass. Proof was there with him. Rest in peace. In summer of 99, the rapper frequently performed at uh, on the Vans Warped Tour and in hip-hop clubs. He also became a highly controversial figure due to the lyrical content, which some perceived to be just negative on the American youth. The Slim Shady LP went on to be certified quadruple platinum by the Recording Industry Association America of America, that's RIAA, and has sold over 18 million copies worldwide. It could even be closer to 20 mil. I don't know that it's been certified diamond, I think is for 20 mil. But in 2012, the album ranked on Rolling Stone Magazine's list of 500 greatest albums of all time. It was right about in the middle. 
Now, recent hashtags on at Eminem on Instagram have led some to believe that could SSLP2 be coming or the Slim Shady LP2. We've seen him do that before. Uh, there was a quote I have from his Instagram. He says the reissue of Slim Shady LP, we'll talk about this, expanded edition is now streaming for the first time for the 20th anniversary. Happy B-Day, he said, Shady. Uh, SSLP20, and then hashtag still don't give a fuck. Now, I'm not convinced that SSLP2 will drop, but I think it is worth noting that M is basically saying after 20 years, I still don't give a, you know what I mean. Now, a lot of this information that I'm going to cover now was taken directly from Genius.com. I am, as I mentioned, a big fan of the album. I probably haven't went back and revisited as much since I used to play it on repeat back in the day. It is one of my favorites. If you have streaming music like uh, Spotify, you can go in and you will see that they updated for the 20th anniversary that I mentioned. There is an expanded track list. Now, you're not going to uncover anything that you hadn't heard before, more than likely if you're a true M Slim Shady fan. Now, the original album as you may recall, has 20 tracks on it. When you look at Spotify, for instance, and you check out Eminem, you'll see right there the expanded version. Same cover art at the bottom. It has the expanded edition, and it has the backwards E uh, for the ED on expanded. So you look at tracks 21, and it goes all the way to track 30. So they basically added Hazardous Youth Acapella, Get You Mad, which is the Sway and King Tech, Greg, acapella, Bad Guys Always Die, which was from the the Will Smith bomb, one of his worst movies, A Wild Wild West, but I do like the track. I've used it a couple times on music for this podcast. Guilty Conscience radio version, Guilty Conscience instrumental, Guilty Conscience acapella, My Name Is instrumental, Just Don't Give a You Know What acapella, and then Just Don't Give a instrumental. So let's go through each track. Maybe there's some things you don't know about this album. If you haven't went back and re-listened to it, check it out, man. It is a classic. So the beginning starts off with a public service announcement brought to you by Slim Shady. Now, this is about 33 seconds. Jeff Bass is the voice here, so we'll talk a little bit more about him. Now, he performed it, and uh, he is heavily tied all over this album. So we roll right into the name Uh, which we got from this track, My Name Is. Hi, My Name Is. That was written by Marshall Mathers and Dre. It was produced by Dre, mixed by Dre, and the mix engineering by Richard Seagal was his nickname. Now, this contains an interpolation from the intro track of this episode and the intro track to this segment, which is I Got The. That's all it's called. Now, I can't pronounce the guy's name. He's from overseas. The track samples, I got the, and I think the guy's name is Labai, L-A-B-I, he goes by, S-I-F-F-R-E. Now, at the beginning of this podcast, you probably didn't pick up on that, right? Because it's the beginning of the song that I used. Now, for this segment, you probably heard the beat, and that is a 1975 song. As I mentioned, I got the, it's a British uh, musician. If you go on Spotify and you look up the track, You have to go to about the 210 mark, and you will hear it clearly. Reading different articles, as soon as Eminem was hearing what Dre was playing, he started saying, hi, my name is, and Dre was like, wait, what did you just say? And Eminem was like, wait, what? And they kind of went back and forth, and he was like, say that again. So that's kind of the genius of Dre. He was like, he immediately knew that that would go. Now, it's important to note, you guys know, hi, my name is, right? So that was the track that... Eminem's mom decided to sue him over. So he talks about his mom did more drugs than he did. Crazy. That launched, I think it was a $10 million lawsuit. Now, Eminem insisted that part of the line was changed from my teacher. My English teacher wanted to have sex in junior high. The only problem was my English teacher was a guy to my English teacher wanted to flunk me in junior high. Thanks a lot. Next semester, I'll be 35. There are, um, I'd say like the track was famous in for many ways, right? It was catchy, but it almost reminds me like when Snoop Dogg came out. It's like, what's my mother effing name? Snoop Doggy Dogg. And then 
you pretty much know, like, Snoop Dogg, like, that reinforced, like, him, boom, flag in the ground. Well, that was kind of like Eminem here, right? Hi, my name is, my name is Slim Shady. It was all over. It was catchy. It had a lot of punchlines in the song. It really, it goes down, I think, is the genius of Dre. We've seen him do this many times over with artists, especially when they first, you know, they first come out, whether it's 50 Cent with his debut or it's Kendrick Lamar. You know, he has that way to put the artist out in a way that everybody's like, man, that's, dude, I know that track, you know, and, and, and it gets played on radio. And as Mike and I talked about, it was all over MTV. I mean, go back and watch the video. It'll bring back memories. Now, I've also heard that Eminem doesn't like performing that song. Some of the crazy stands out there would probably know because I've only seen them in concert maybe three times. I think three for three that I can remember for sure. But you know, yeah, you know, let me know what you guys think. I, I think it's 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 a great track. Now, next you had "Guilty Conscience," so it was written by Martha. Ma- it was written by Eminem and Dre. You had the same mixing engineer, and this has an interpolation of "Go Home, Pigs," as contained in the film "Getting Straight," published by EMI Music. Now, this track, I read an article on NME.com, and on this one, believe it or not, a 70-year-old woman, this was back in 2003, was suing M. and Dre for unlawfully sampling music by her late husband. Harleen Stein says the track Guilty Conscience, which was released as a single, features snippets from a piece called, quote, Go Home Pigs, that her husband Ronald wrote for the score of the 1970 film Getting Straight. How crazy is that? Now, Dre, I've also seen in the past a couple of different times, and this happens to producers and record labels. Uh, We saw it from, uh, I can't remember his name. He had a really catchy song, and I think he had to give back like three or four million dollars of all the royalties that he made because they didn't have the proper clearances. So this ha- used to happen a little bit more, I think, than it does now because record labels, you know, get hip to it. But Guilty Conscience, I mean, how can you go wrong with this track, right? I think it's 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 badass because you have Dre almost like arguably at his best, right? And it has these different scenarios in it. Uh, Dre and M, uh, you know, they kind of go back and forth. It's like the evil versus good conscience perspective, right? Uh, you have three separate people who are about to commit violence of or sexual crimes. Dre wins the first battle, whereas Eminem wins the second. In the third, the two agree that the bad thing to do is actually the morally right thing to do. So you listen to the song and you're like, ah, you know, by today's standards, it's pretty crazy, right? So you know, M in the second verse, he's like, you shouldn't take it. Uh, Dre says you shouldn't take advantage of her. It's not fair. And then M says, yo, look at her. You know what? It's got hair. I mean, it's got some crazy out there lyrics even for that time, so you could see why it was so controversial. If you haven't watched the video on this, go back and watch it again. It's a classic uh, video. Love, you know, the the, the production on it. And uh, I think it just goes down in history that uh, w- one of the better Eminem songs, man, one of my favorites, right? Uh, on Genius.com, M was quoted in an appearance on MTV Italy. He says, Dre had the idea. He was like, what if we make a song called Night and Day? I was the evil. He was the good. I think that's when we both kind of collaborated. Like, you know, what if he was the devil on one shoulder and then the angel on the other, right? So he kind of went on to say, I remember going in and doing a couple of lines. He would lay a couple of lines and I laid a couple more lines. And then after that, I just remember him tipping back in the chair you know, like almost fell over laughing so hard. I think it was when he said, Mr. Dre, Mr. D-R-E, Mr. N-W-A. So, you know, again, it, it was kind of cool because imagine they just had kind of met and they're doing this deal and they're you know making this album. And at the infancy of their relationship in terms of business partners, they could joke around and M was like this young white dude. And boom, you know, t- probably 25 years old recording this. And here he is saying some funny shit about Dre, and it got Dre to smile. Good, good shit. So Brain Damage, track four, written by Marshall Mathers, and then the Bass Brothers. You had It was produced by Marky and Jeff Bass. Now the drums, 
Uh, drum programming was Mailman. So you guys will remember him if you like the Chronic 2001. You know Mailman was all over that. Eminem shouts out Mailman on Kamikaze, which he, of course, was heavily involved with Dre uh, back in, as I mentioned, the Chronic 2001 days. Now, Slim Shady spins a grotesque and surreal tale on this track, although inspired by real events, uh, about his childhood and how he became so crazy. The D'Angelo Bailey name in the song actually uh, attempted to sue Eminem for $1 million. Some of you guys know this, but he was basically like a real bully to Eminem. That was back in 03, claiming that Eminem slandered D'Angelo Bailey, you know, in terms of the character and fabricated stories. Now, this is funny. The case ended up being dismissed by the judge who wrote her own rap at the end of the ruling to explain her decision. What? I mean, that's just insane to me. Now, what was crazy is... In 82, there was a detailed lawsuit filed by Eminem's mom, so maybe she wasn't all that bad, on behalf of her son. So imagine the early 80s, man. You got picked on. You kind of just was like, man, you got picked on, unfortunately. But Eminem's mom had the foresight to, I guess, file a lawsuit. It had to be pretty bad. D'Angelo Bailey basically assaulted Marshall Mathers on numerous occasions. Now, the official document states that young Marshall had suffered multiple ailments as a direct result of the bullying, including, but not limited to, bruising, multiple wounds, lacerations, nausea, abnormal sleeplessness, antisocial behavior, nightmares, cerebral concussions, loss of consciousness, right? You almost think back, and that possibly was the emphasis of Eminem, who we know it, and Slim Shady, right? So it sucks for any kid to get bullied, but it was almost like, did this really make who we know today? And if that's the way it went down, man, that's some genius shit, right? So M also spoke about Bailey in a Rolling Stone interview. He said, motherfucker used to beat the shit out of me, M said. I was in fourth grade and he was in sixth. Everything in the song is true. And he said, one day he came into the bathroom and I was pissing And he beat the shit out of me. He said, I pissed all over myself. If you want to hear about D'Angelo Bailey in another song, check out Eminem's verse in D12's American Psycho 2 on their second album, featuring B-Rail. When I first heard that track, I was like, oh shit, he's got some sick wordplay. Talking about the snowbank and Neanderthalish. Super, super sick wordplay. Eminem. You, you may not be a fan, but you sit back and you look at the wordplay and you're just like, damn, how does he come up with this stuff? I love the track. Again, track four, Brain Damage, and it ties in perfectly to, boom, his childhood. And I can tell you right now, in fourth grade, man, if I was getting that beat up, I wouldn't know what the hell to do, man. You'd fight back, obviously, but uh, D'Angelo Bailey was probably a lot bigger than him, knowing M's little skinny ass. Okay, so next you got Paul. That was performed by Paul Rosenberg. The cover art for this, uh, my friend Kelly, I sent her an image of Paul Rosenberg's post for the Slim Shady anniversary. He did a cake, right, probably for uh, Marshall Mathers. We took that, paid homage, and we put the little OLP logo on it. So full credit goes to Paul Pauly Rosenberg. Now the first time, this is the first time that I recall hearing Paul Rosenberg uh, which, of course, now he's high up, I think, at Def Jam. He's running that, uh, and he's a close advisor, friend. Obviously, he's a right hand, I would say, to Eminem. I love when he says, basic attorney of law. I got to be honest. Can you tone it down a bit? It's short and sweet. Another one of my favorite songs, track six, If I Had. Again, Marshall Mathers, the Bass Brothers on this one. Uh, you can feel the realness in this track, right? It's a simple beat, and uh, he kind of starts off, I'm tired of life, right? And... Um, He goes on, he says, Life by Marshall Mathers, what is life? Life is like a big obstacle in front of your optical to slow you down. And every time you think you've gotten past it, it's going to come back around to tackle you to the damn ground. Uh, He just, I mean, spits a lot of just badass lyrics in it. Uh, M's take on the Bare Naked Ladies, if I had however much money, written when he was poor, he didn't have anything, you know, he couldn't even afford stuff for his daughter. Uh, and if I had Eminem po- uh, poetically list everything in his life that he is tired of having to deal with, 
in a sad, sympathetic tone with a clean, as I mentioned, simple beat. Great track. 97, Body and Clyde. So, dude, super controversial, right? This, again, Marshall, Mather, Marshall Mathers, Bass Brothers. Uh, originally titled Just the Two of Us, so you kind of hear that in the track, from the Slim Shady EP. So that was, of course, released the year prior. Now, this was retitled to 97 Bonnie and Clyde, and it speaks to Eminem's story of using Haley. Now, the song chronicles the fictional story of Eminem running off with Haley after murdering his ex in Haley's, of course, mother, Kim, her new lover, and her stepson, an episode uh, which was later described in the Marshall Mathers LP uh, Kim track, right? Now, M talked in a book called The Angry Blonde. He says, see, uh, we, which was Kim and him, weren't together, and she was using my daughter Haley as a weapon against me, and she wasn't letting me see her. I originally wrote the song to get back at her so she could hear it. My original reason for making it was to piss her off. I even went so far as to use Haley or Haley's voice for the vocal you hear on the record. It was my little baby's first musical appearance, end quote. Now, originally released on uh, 21298 as just the two of us on the Slim Shady EP. And think about this, right? He doesn't swear at all on the track. Was it, you know, was he doing it knowing that Haley was on it, you know, is what I was thinking? Or was it because it, it was just like that much sinister? So just the two of us, Originally, and then it was altered to 97 Bonnie and Clyde. You can't go wrong with the track. Super sick. The wordplay is insane. It's crazy that it used Haley. Just imagine. Uh, this song really, I think, propelled him in terms of the storytelling. Now, apart from the title, the version has a slightly different beat switched up by Dre and an extended intro taken from Mommy. The skit interlude on the Slim Shady EP that comes before just the two of us. The new title pays homage, this is according to Genius.com, to Tupac in his song Me and My Girlfriend, in which he titled him and his girlfriend 96 Bonnie and Clyde. In this version, the 97 Bonnie and Clyde refers to M and his daughter Haley. The song chronicles the fictional story, as I kind of mentioned, and uh, it's super sick. I uh, love the track. Even though it's sinister as hell, it's crazy, it's a damn good one. Okay, so the next one was a skit, Bitch, right? So you've heard this, and maybe you skip it each time, and you're like, eh, whatever. You're on Spotify, and you're like, who is Zoe Winkler, right? So there's a cool little story to this. Zoe Winkler, this is basically an actual message from someone named Zoe Winkler, who happened to be the daughter of Henry Winkler. Now, due to the crazy lyrics on the Slim Shady LP album, Zoe goes off about how the lyrics offended her. In order to have permission to use the voicemail for the album, Eminem first offered Zoe $300. But she didn't uh, need the money, and she replied he had to go to dinner with her instead, which eventually happened in the clean version of the album, the title Bitch, uh, was replaced with Zoe. So pretty crazy there. I didn't know that until several years ago when I did some research about the track. For a super short track, it's pretty cool. Okay, Role Model. This is uh, Eminem, Dre, and Melman. Uh, love how the song starts. Uh, you can attempt to drown yourself. He's got the cannabis diss in it. And then M himself talked about the this also in the Angry Blonde book. He said, I was just fucking around when I made the song. To me, it's just a rap record. The message behind it was just complete sarcasm. I want it to be clear. Don't look at me like I'm an effing role model. Dre and I were in the studio at his house, and he had made the track first, right? I started a rhyme, and the night before, I hadn't finished it. When I heard the track, I said, yo, Dre, I got a rhyme that goes with that. I finished the rhyme and started writing the song in the studio. I finished the first verse, knocked out the second, and then I wrote a hook. Then Melman thought of the part that goes... Don't you want to grow up to be just like me? I said, yo, that's perfect. Because I was talking about the same shit. You know, smoke weed, take pills, drop out of school, all that shit. So he had that part of the hook, and I filled in all the blanks. I came in the club drunk with a fake ID. Don't you want to grow up to be just like me? This was one of the first three songs I did with Dre when we began working together. So, again, love the track, Role Model. 
ties in perfectly to the album overall uh, feel and, and sense of how they you know put it together and love the mixing overall on the track. So Lounge is track 10, performed by Eminem, Marky, and Jeff Bass. This was a skit, I Never Meant to Give You Mushrooms Girl, which flows right in to track 11, My Fault. You got uh, Eminem and uh, the Bass guys on this one uh, as well. Eminem's crazy lyrics on this one, right? So download the Genius app if you want to follow along with the lyrics. Uh, It's a great place uh, to share knowledge about songs and to look up facts like I'm giving you now. A song about how Eminem gave his girl Susan mushrooms. Now, when Je- he quote, uh, this is quote um, Eminem behind the stories every song. When Jeff Bass uh, came up with the mushrooms line, Eminem got to thinking about an incident in which one of his friends had a bad acid trip. He was talking about how worthless he was and how effed up his life was. Recalled Eminem, who took it on himself to reassure the guy who was going through a bout of depression. In this fictional scenario, M's friend is a girl, and he's not quite as helpful. So, a uh, crazy song. I won't really go through all the lyrics on this one, uh, but verse 2, he does say, Yo, Sue, get away from me. I don't know you. Oh, shoot, she's tripping. I need to go puke. So, it, it's just another storytelling track from M that's a little bit crazy, and it's catchy. All right, so, you may not know this about Ken Kniff. I always thought, listening to this skit, that it was Eminem, right, pranking one of his friends. Couldn't be the furthest from the truth. So it's about a minute and 16 seconds. So this track is just crazy, right? There was an underground rapper named Aristotle, and he basically calls and he punks Eminem, right? So that's from the research that I've done, that's basically how it went down. It's possibly the funniest skit ever. Now, this was off the Slim Shady... Uh, LP, as we're talking about, and a um, a guy named Ken Kniff, that was Aristotle of the underground, um, that was Aristotle, an underground rapper, calls Eminem, and his reaction is hysterical. So even when I go back and listen to it, it almost sounds like Eminem's calling someone, but as far as the research I've done, that is Eminem that's getting punked. What I had read is that he used that like on one of his albums to basically say, look, I punked Eminem. And then Eminem was able to turn around and use it, and he used it on his own album. How crazy is that? Okay, next one, a little bit different of a track. Come on, everybody. This is Marshall Mathers and the Bass guys as well. It's a dope beat, fast pace. You got the Outsiders shout out on it. He's got the Kurt Cobain, the Lauryn Hill diss, of course. Eminem talked about this song in the book Angry Blonde. Come On Everybody was another song he did between the EP and the LP. He wanted to make a dance parody. It was during the Puffy stage when Puffy was really big. He goes on to say that when he wrote the song, he thought, what if I made a dance song my way? So I was talking, or so I was taking the most ridiculous shit and then coming up with the hook, Come On Everybody. Note, Eminem uses orange in this track, which doesn't rhyme with anything in the English Dictionary. Uh, so that was something I wanted to point out. He also spoke about Orange, of course, in the 60-minute interview, I think, with uh, Anderson Cooper. What about when he says, you thought I was ill and now I'm even more so? Shit, I got full-blown AIDS and a sore throat. I got a wardrobe with an orange robe. <laughs> I'm in fourth row signing autographs at your show. So uh, crazy track. Okay, Rock Bottom, uh, same guys, Marshall Mathers, Bass Brothers. This is another one of my favorite tracks. Uh, I love when he says dedicated to all the happy people who have real nice lives and who have no idea how it feels to be broke as fuck. You can tell how young and I call it hungry that M is on this track. His daughter is down to her last diaper. And of course, he mentions a mini truck, uh, a Pathfinder in the track. Now, as M also mentions in Angry Blonde, Rock Bottom was another song done between the EP and LP. I didn't know when I wrote it that it was going to come out that sad. I had actually meant uh, to be uh, for it to be an uplifting song, but when we were sitting around making the track, Head had a sample that he played, uh, the beat, and he thought it was just pretty much sad. He said, fuck it, let's go with this one. Not surprisingly, I wrote it while I was going through a really messed up time. 
the night I recorded the song, I had taken a bunch of pills, thrown up, and was just really fucking depressed. So I took a bunch of codeine tablets. Problem was, I took too many of them shits and got real sick. When I wrote the song, it was right before the Rap Olympics happened. It was during the week when I had gotten evicted from my house. I was staying across the street from where I used to live. It was a street called Navarra out in Detroit. I was staying with uh, these two roommates, and this uh, dude told me that he had a cheaper rent for me, and I should come live with him. We said, okay, we've got a cheaper rent, and fuck it, right? So we'll move to his house. So me and my boy went across the street to live with him. We were paying out rent to him, but the SOB was keeping our rent and wasn't paying the landlord. So he took the rent, saved up his own money, and then he bounced on him. So one day, we come home, and all of our shit was on the front lawn. We never could catch the motherfucker, he says. Till this day, we haven't caught him. It was a real fucked up period in my life, no surprise there. And I felt like I had hit, quote, rock bottom. Okay, this is one of only two tracks, if I remember correctly, on the Slim Shady LP, the other being If I Had, that is not from the Slim Shady persona perspective, but rather from Marshall Mathers himself. All right, track 15, Just Don't Give a Fuck, right? So Marshall Mathers and the Bass Brothers. Now this track, this first track technically was not a single. It was released, yeah, in October 98. I was pretty sure on that. So I'm looking at my notes now. The, it's a classic track. Like when he says he's brain dead like Jim Brady. Now Eminem details his writing process for this track in the Angry Blind book. Just Don't Give a Fuck was a song that I wrote when I was staying at my mom's house. It was around the time Haley was born. She wasn't even a year old yet. All kinds of shit, not being able to provide for my daughter, my living situation, etc. Just started building up so much that I had just had it. Just Don't Give a Fuck actually was actually the second song where people that knew me was like, man, uh, what the fuck are you talking about? See, I didn't normally talk about stuff like that. I soon my found myself doing things that I normally didn't do, like getting into drugs and drinking. I was really fucked up. I was sick of everything. Kim and I had Haley, but producers FBT were just about to give up on me. We weren't paying rent uh, to my mom's and just a whole bunch of other horrible shit was going on. The song was also on the Slim Shady EP before being repackaged with an uh, altered instrumental for Eminem's debut solo album, which we're talking about now. In the clean version of the album, the title was changed to Just Don't Give. It became a, just a, a mega producer, right? Produced all kinds of... I think he even uh, technically wrote a letter to Afini Shakur about doing the Resurrection soundtrack, right? And he made... He produced one of the songs for that. That was the Tupac and Biggie track. Like, I mean, he was at a super low point in his life, give or take you know, 23, 24 years old-ish. And man, his back was against the wall straight up. Just don't give a fuck. And he still now is this worldwide superstar. It just shows that no matter how bad things can get, you can dig yourself out. All right, so Soap was a skit with Royce the Five Nine, longtime associate of Eminem. Then you have track 17, As the World Turns. This is uh, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathers, and the Bass Brothers. This is probably my favorite track on the album. Love when he says, I don't know why this world keeps turning round and round, but I wish it would stop and let me off right now. Just brings me back to, again, the good old days, late 90s. <laughs> Love that time period. Uh, the title song is a reference to the soap opera As the World Turns, where the characters have to deal with, with most of the trial and tribulations Shady is talking about. The track follows a skit on the album called Soap to establish the soap opera reference. Yes, if you never realize that, that's what he's talking about. On the track, Eminem appears entirely as Slim Shady, an alias which represents the dark and impulsive side of his personality. At the end of the first verse, the evil finale transform him into Shady, losing all impulse control. Then... Uh, continues to terrorize various women throughout the song, possibly inspired by NWA's Fat Girl. So, yes, you might have learned something there. Badass track. It's one of my favorites on the album. Okay, I'm Shady. 
This is uh, when it first starts. Like I, f- it kind of first starts. I almost feel like it's it's Mary J's real love. Like at the very jump of the track, probably one of my least favorite songs. I mean, I still like it on this album. It was produced by the Bass Brothers. M raps about his life as a white trash drug dealer and helps introduce Slim Shady character to the masses. Off the Slim Shady LP, which came out when Shady was not widely known. This is melodically much like Curtis Mayfield's Pusher Man. On the topic, Angry Blonde, he mentions, It's funny, because I didn't get the idea from Mayfield's song. I got it from Ice-T's Power Record. I didn't know Ice got it from Pusher Man. uh, Pusher Man, excuse me. I used the melody, but changed the words. Pretty cool. Okay, Bad Meets Evil. Uh, This is with his boy Royce the Five Nine. They go on to, of course, form the group Bad Meets Evil. If uh, you haven't checked out their tracks, do it. The album is solid. Love it. Uh, Love the track Fastlane. And then also, I might use it as the outro for this uh, episode, which is called Scary Movies. Classic M uh, track that I really, really dig. Uh, He, of course, did that with Voice the Five Nine. But Five Nine is the man... Uh, He, of course, is back um, from the skit earlier that we heard him on. Bad Meets Evil gives us an idea of the future group, as I mentioned. I reckon he ain't familiar with these parts around here. I don't speak. I float in air in a sheet. I dig it because it really shows the the lyricism from both of these badass artists. So it's one of my favorite tracks on the album, and you want to just definitely check it out. He goes on to say, I reckon you ain't familiar with these parts. You know, there's a story behind that their saloon 20 years ago. Two outlaws took this whole town over. Sheriff couldn't stop them. Kind of goes on. But when Roy starts out, like I mentioned a moment ago, I don't speak. I float in the air wrapped in a sheet. I'm not a real person. I'm a ghost trapped in a beat. Super sick. Okay, and then we round it out. We still don't give a fuck. A lot of people ask me, am I afraid of death? I don't want to die yet. A lot of people think it goes on from there, and it is classic. Probably my second favorite track on the album. I love when he goes into If I Offended You Good. I'm zoning off of one joint, stopping the limo, hopped in the window, shopping a demo at gunpoint, a lyricist without a clue what year is this. Fuck a needle, here's a sword, body pierced with this. Straight up, love the track. Uh, It's definitely classic. It's great for a finale. Uh, M reaffirms that he does not give a fuck on a track laced with vivid imagery and inventive wordplay. As M explained in the Angry Blonde book, this was my manager uh, Paul's concept. He called me one day and was like, yo, I was in Cali saying, you need to do Just Don't Give a Fuck Part 2. I responded, yeah, Still Don't Give a Fuck, right? So in the clean version of the album, the title was replaced by Still Don't Give. So there you have it, you know, 45 minutes of me breaking down arguably one of my favorite albums of all time. There's a lot of facts out there about it. I would say if you're interested, check out, there's a Spin interview, uh, uh, spin.com. The interview was done in 1999, so that's a good one to check out. There is the uh, freep.com. Now, this is a really, really good one. It says, Eminem's Slim Shady LP turns 20, an oral history of the album that created a superstar. And it goes on. I I read the excerpt earlier. It also talks to a lot of people that were involved or around him at that time, including uh, Mark Kempfey, a former Eminem manager, Mark Bass, so on and so forth. He's got a couple old uh, photos, including uh, Eminem in September of 97 at the Palladium in Michigan. So a lot of good history there. It's a badass album. I could even talk more about it. I think I gave you guys some of the bigger facts about it. I know some of the stands out there, if they happen to run across this episode or this podcast, you're going to probably, you know, get me on a few errors there. I tried to keep it true and true. Definitely check it out. Whether you got the CD, you got the tape cassette. Uh, it's definitely fire, fire emoji, right? And if you really, really are a collector, hit up Eminem.com, the Slim Shady LP 20th anniversary. They are going to re-release this on vinyl and tape cassette. Yes, you heard it right. And I just saw an article recently that talked about vinyl and CD is definitely on the rise. 
it actually, I think they said last year, outpaced iTunes purchases. Now, not streaming. Streaming's where it's at. But there's still about 9 to $10 billion a year in physical copies. People that collect, people that are super fans like me, that buy certain albums. So, Eminem.com. Uh, you can sign up there coming soon. Exclusive vinyl, merchandise, and collector items are on the way. Uh, listen to the expanded edition. It links you over to multiple online streaming venues. And then sign up for first access to Anniversary Capsule here. Man, what a classic album. So I want to end this episode by saying thanks to all the sponsors. Give a huge shout out to Morgan over at Viair Corp. Appreciate what they do. We're looking to have her on for a couple updates really, really soon. Big ups to sparklesdetail.com. Order your detailing products there today or at a number of these shows around the United States. Make sure you have them detail your ride. Custom Car Show Productions. We're looking forward to Orange Beach Invasion, as Mike talked about earlier. Hammered Weekend Wear. Riggedy Ron Perkins. Hit up there. Hit up hammeredweekendwear.com. Also, don't forget, they got lady shirts. ATLmagazine.com. Get that 2019 subscription and sound off in the Airhead Nation Facebook group. Let me know, what did I leave out? What are your favorite songs? We'll get a thread growing on Friday. We appreciate y'all. We out you. Yo, yo, so there you have it, episode 113. Before we go, I definitely want to give a huge shout out to Jason Haywood airbrush this on instagram please do yourself a favor type in airbrush this on facebook or instagram and follow jason he's got a great website airbrushthis.com really good dude he did something awesome for mike and i at after dark show we'll talk about it a little bit on the next episode but you know what he did more importantly for my dad and putting together a really cool airbrushed piece that we can hang out in a nice shaded area by our swimming pool. It really, um, you know, is something that I'm proud of, and I thank him very, very much for what he did. He's a talented artist out there. And the other reason why I wanted to give him a big shout out in Street Trucks, April 2019 issue that I did mention earlier in this episode, there is a really, really, really kick ass feature. And what I think is badass. Women of the Scene or Under Eyes. It is by the awesome Nicole Hamilton, Chris Hamilton's lovely, awesome wife. So when you pick up this new issue of Street Trucks, I would tell everyone, take a look on pages 84 through, it's a long feature, 92. No joke. And you will see the 3500 Pretty cool name, Blackwood, that ties right into the whole Redwood theme, which is the S10. Badass rig. And I tell you, Airbrush This, a.k.a. Jason Haywood, really, really good dude. So follow him. He does fantastic work. And uh, thanks again for what you did, homie. I hope you guys have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on 114. Gotcha. What's your favorite scary movie? Yo, Slim Shady. Yo. Y'all wanna make a movie? What? We got the film what? right here. Yeah, I'm one of them pretty rappers. Fuck if I really have to, I really slap you. King of Detroit, who they name in the city after? What? Scantless partners, who's grabbing hammers to hard shit into your heart with content you don't wanna start with. Expert, bad and evil is coming soon. Them seeds get stuck head first back in their mother's womb. The shit is written, in my eyes I'm the illest MC spitting. What? Leaving all of you cat shit and kittens. I gotta dish you. My niggas be cocking pistols, shot and split you. Fuck splitting the profits with you. What? Six percent of y'all niggas is just pretend. Clicks with clicks, pussy niggas stick with dicks. What? Niggas act bully and blast for the fast penny. My auto is fully. Plenty of your niggas pack a semi. Speak dark, yo you get paid. What? Rhyming about it is the sweet part. You can't be street smart. With a cheap heart, five nine, a street nigga with deep feeling. I keep illin', my steeds willing to keep killing. What? Fuck rap, a lot of y'all all is just acts. Trust that you rhyme all whack on rough tracks. Bust, and then we all black when you get bust back at. Fuck that, you get blasted at, you get laughed at, and I'ma spit thunder. What? Stick to my guns, niggas is finished before they gimmicks. One hit wonders, what? Big balls, that's why when I spit, you click stars. I'm a pit bull, 
I'm just thug, I'm just raw But split y'all, holler it's on Then I dish y'all All of y'all niggas get pissed on Claiming you pissed off Y'all want drama? Wanna make a scary movie? Rappers coming in with their team and carry toolies You can jump right out of the screen and barely move me We hard hitting, directing and starring in it Y'all want drama? Wanna make a scary movie? Rappers coming in with their team and carry toolies You can jump right out of the screen and barely move me We hard hitting the one man on the planet that'll drive off of the Grand Canyon Hop out of a Grand Dam and land in a handstanding Any man planning a battle will get snatched out of his clothes so fast It'll look like an invisible man standing I'm headed for hell, I'd rather be dead or in jail Bill Clinton, hit this, and you better than hell Cause any MC that chooses to go against me is getting taken advantage of Like Monica Lewinsky, came home in a frenzy, pushing a 10 speed Screaming the amp, hey, with three spokes sticking out of my pant leg Fuck a headache, give me a migraine Damn it, I like pain You used to be anywhere that I might came You rap knowing you act You act up and I'm throwing you down a flight of steps Then I'm throwing you back up em. If they don't like the track, fuck em. The rap struck them harder than getting hit by a Mack truck And then backed up on And any half-assed known rapper to trespass Better be ready for the second celebrity death match So tell the medic to bring the medication in quickly I'm sicker than the Tupac dedication to Biggie I'm free falling feet first out of a damn tree To stampede your chest that you can't breathe And when I'm down to my last I'ma climb the Empire State Building and get to the last step. You still have half Y'all want drama? Wanna make a scary movie? Rappers coming in with their team and carry toolies. You can jump right out of the screen and barely move me. We hard hitting, directing and starring in it. Y'all want drama? Wanna make a scary movie? Rappers coming in with their team and carry toolies. You can jump right out of the screen and barely move me. We hard hitting, directing and starring in it.